Chapter 7. Every Chihuahua in America lines up to take a bite out of Byron. I was sitting at the kitchen table doing homework and watching Mama make dinner when Byron came in through the back door. He was surprised we were there because as soon as he saw us, he turned around and tried to walk right back out. Both me and Mama smelled a rat. Byron, Mama said, what have I told you about wearing that hat in the house? Oh, yeah, I was just going right back. He pushed the screen door open again. Wait a minute. Byron was trapped in the doorway with his right foot in and his left foot out. Come here. Mama put down the knife she'd been peeling the potatoes with and wiped her hands on a dish towel. Byron's inside foot joined his outside one in trying to get away. I'll be back in a minute. They're waiting for me down at... Byron Watson, you take off that hat and get over here right this minute. It was a hee-huh instead of a here. Uh-oh. Byron started walking toward Mama in slow motion, sliding his foot on the linoleum. He pulled off his hat and stood there looking down like his shoes were all of a sudden real interesting. Byron's head was covered with blue and white handkerchief. Mama sucked in a ton of air. What have you done? We all knew, though. She took a step back and leaned against the counter like if it wasn't there, she had fallen down. Oh my God, your father will kill you. He, he don't have to, cause, cause to. You've gone and done it, haven't you? Byron kept his head down. Haven't you? Mama yelled. Yes! Byron yelled back. Mama reached out and snatched the handkerchief off of Bai's head. Me and Mama both went, <gasps> Byron had gotten a conk, a process, a do, a butter, a ton of trouble. His hair was reddish brown, straight, stiff, and slick looking. Parts of it stuck straight up like the porcupine stickers because Mama hadn't been too gentle when she snatched the handkerchief off. He smoothed his hair back in place. Well, Mama said, that's it. You are now at your at daddy's mercy. You've known all along how we feel about putting those chemicals in your hair to straighten it, but you decided you are a grown man and went and did it anyway. Mama was real hot, but she surprised me. She just shook her head and went back to peeling potatoes. Byron stood there looking at his feet, and I kept pretending I was doing homework. Finally, Mama slammed the knife down and turned around to look at Bai again. Byron stood perfectly still while Mama walked around him a couple of times, taking a better look at his hair. This looked like the Indians circling the wagons again, but this time it was Byron who had to be the white people. Finally, Mama stopped and said, But before your father gets to you, let me ask you something. What do you think? What do you think now that you've gone and done it? Does it make you look any better? Is this straight? Mama flicks some more of Byron's hair back up to porcupine, porcupine style. Is this straight mess more attractive than your own hair? Did, the, did those chemicals give you better looking hair than me and your daddy and God gave you? It was strange. A little laugh was starting to get into Mama's voice. Huh? What do you think? Well, bozo, she said, flicking a piece of Bai's hair out over his left ear and then another piece out over his right one. Maybe you were planning on joining the circus, because you sure do look like an honest-to-God clown now. Mama was right, with big clumps of his hair sticking out to the side over his ears, like that he really did look like bozo. I broke out laughing. But Byron shot me a real dirty look, and I stopped and looked back down at my math book. I hated when things like that happened, and my head automatically went down by itself. Why on earth would you do this, Byron? I wanted a Mexican-style hair. I don't see anything wrong with it. When he saw Mama just looking sad and me looking like I wanted to crack up again, Byron got kind of mad and said, I think it's cool. Well, Daddy Cool, you enjoy your Mexican-style hair while you can, because I'm sure when your daddy gets through with you, you won't be enjoying too much of anything, and cool is the one thing you won't be feeling. You just slide your cool self right on up those stairs to your bedroom and wait for him, Daddy-O. 
iron clumped up the stairs. I told Joey about what happened as soon as our next-door neighbor, Mrs. Davidson, brought her home from Sunday school. Me and Joey went up to see Byron. Byron was on the top bunk with his feet dangling over the side and his hands covering his face. I loved times like this when Byron was about to really get it and couldn't pay me back for teasing him. I started in on him as soon as me and Joey got into the room. Death now, prisoner number 41, you have a visitor. Please make this a short visit, ma'am. The priest will be here any minute to give the prisoner his last meal and his last cigarette. Oops, I forgot. No cigarettes for you. 541, you've been banned from ever looking at matches, remember? Byron was feeling sad. He didn't say anything to me. He didn't even give me a dirty look. That made me a lot braver. When she saw his hair, Joetta's eyes got real big and her voice got all choky. Byron Watson, what were you thinking about? Look at your head. Daddy's going to kill you. Come down from there. Let's go to the bathroom and wash that stuff out of your hair before Daddy gets here. Byron raised his slick down head from his hands. Go away, Joey. Come on, Byron. We got to wash your hair till that junk comes out. Hurry. Joetta pulled on Byron's dangling legs. Stop, Joey, he finally said. This don't wash out. It's got to grow out. You mean, you have to keep it like that until it comes back normal? Yeah, Byron said, kind of smiling. They can't do nothing till it grows back. Oh no, Daddy's going to tear you up. I said, that's right, ma'am. 541 is just waiting for the executioner to get home. Would you like to stick around and write down his last words? Joey turned and snapped. Why is this so funny to you, Kenny? Her eyes looked real mean. Who knows what daddy's going to do to him? Byron's hands came back up to cover his face. I said to Joey, why are you yelling at me? It wasn't me who went and got a butter, and no one forced him to do it either. It makes me sick the way she's always protecting Byron. She turned back to him. Who did this to you, Bye? She didn't have to ask. There was only one other 14-year-old in the neighborhood who had a conk. I answered for him. It was Buphead. Why'd you let him buy? I told you to go away, Joey. No, Byron. Why'd you let him do this? Because I wanted to, that's why. But didn't you know Mommy and Daddy would find out? Shoot, you think I care what them squares say? I said, and there you have it, ma'am. The reason 545 must die. He won't confess his guilt. Byron looked at me for the first time, and I started easing toward the door. He said, You think I don't know what you're doing, punk? You think I don't know you're loving all this mess? But I've been expecting that this is just like that show I seen about wolves. They said the top wolf is always getting challenged by jive little wolves. They said the top dog wolf can't show no weakness at all. That if he do, he gets hurt or something. If he steps on a broke bottle and starts limping or something, all the little jive wolves in the pack start trying to overthrow him. That's what's happening right now. You think I'm hurt, and you and every other punk chihuahua in America is climbing out of the woodwork to try and get a bite out of me.